Ladies, gentlemen, bodies of water, welcome to the Alchemy Lab. My name is Lee. I'm back to playing Cassius Valentine today. My name is Carl, and this week I'm not Gracchus. And this meeting is being recorded. I'm so Matt, I don't think and I, am I don't think you hear it. I don't think I'm they'll just hear giving it. You, I'm just giving them a taste of what we can hear when we start, yeah. which is why there's the pregnant pause. It happens on every <laughs> fucking call I'm in at the moment. Every call I'm in. Fucking Zoom. Fuck you, Zoom. But don't Indeed. let me that keep is, my license. That is rude. Welcome to the Alchemy Lab. I tell you Not what, so I... Streets of Mere. Case number 10. An offer you can't refuse. It's getting creepy now. Oh, oh, I'm back. Sorry. Zoom, Zoom took me over. Yes, an offer you can't refuse. Indeed. All right, last we left off, Gracchus had... I mean, at this point, Gracchus is kind of on the war path. He's, on, he's marching to war. He's found some place in Tier 7 where he can attack. And he is going to attack it with with great vengeance and furious anger. Um, so that's all going on. That's all going on down in Tier 7. But up in Tier 5, there's, um, there's something altogether different going on. And we open in Tier 5 in a lush plush room uh, awnings and and soft leather cushions of various wonderful colours and a very very large bed where Cassius Valentine reclines um, Cassius you've been here for five days um, and you are in a lap of luxury um, you're surrounded by four very beautiful half-elves and one rather adventurous halfling. Cassius thinks to himself that Gracchus needs to stop being so bull-headed. Just, just to s settle into the, to the chaos of the world and sometimes it can um, reward you in blush and sometimes adventurous halfling ways well so far you haven't you haven't seen anything of uh, omar delano or elia um mm. they've pretty much put you up in here and waited on you hand and foot um, um you've you've had fantastic food fantastic wines and all the adventurous halflings you could want Fan fantastic whores mm. Oh yeah, entertainment as well. It's been you had a, a great bard come in um, two nights before who sang a, a gentle medley of tunes, and then then strang it up a little bit and provided you with some twanging as you got down to it with some adventurous halflings. That's so dope. <laughs> was he a tabaxi? He wasn't a tabaxi, was he? No, he was he was decidedly no. not a tabaxi. I didn't have to shank my fucking bard halfway through going, hang on. <laughs> you, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> it is not me, it is someone else. <laughs> um, so what are you doing? Have I finished up? Yes. Okay. I've finished up, I've cleaned up. I um I make them leave. I will see you later, lovelies. Uh, they, the half elves, all bow and depart. The halfling does a little backflip and follows. Um, as they're leaving, as they're leaving the room, um, you see a, a flash of purple, and uh, there is a tiefling on the threshold. He kind of backs off to let. The uh, the various the platoon party, mm. and then he um, enters the room, followed by a um, Genasi. 
the uh, the tiefling to, is is that the one that I pissed off? Yes, yes, it is. You recognise oh. him immediately hmm. as as Perry, yeah. Perry the purple tiefling. Behind him, though, this Janassi, you you don't know this person. This this is new. This person's new. Well, thank you for letting me finish, Penny. Um, it's Perry. Perry. Yes, yes. And who is your friend? Go on. The name is Tormund. Glad to meet you, Tormund. The boss has requested your presence in the drawing room. He asked okay. us to show you the way. Okay. Needed some muscle, did you, Penny? For the walk. And I just walked past him. One of these days. One of these days, Perry. Straight gonna... to the moon. Straight to the moon. <laughs> Straight to the moons of Mir. <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh, it's a bit of a walk um perry is is leading uh he's sort of sort of jogged around to to take the lead hmm. um tormund is bringing up the rear um it's a bit of a walk would you like to uh, say anything to them or do anything on the way? Uh, I've given Penny enough for now. Um, what's this dude doing by me? Is he like my rear guard? Make a perception check. Mm. Insight. Scratch that. Insight. So it is. Oh. To right click and left click, thank you. Uh, 17. I love Cass with his skills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tormund, what are you doing? What are you doing behind them? Not much. He's uh, casting an eye up and down Cassius, trying to get the measure of the man. Noting the very nice radio and pistol he seems to have on him. Mm -hmm. And He's curious as to why we're suddenly trusting people who are friends with the phone breaker. Mm. Yes, they didn't take your weapons, which is rather mm. curious. Um, however, they did take your ammunition. Mm -hmm. Like what you see, Tormund. He doesn't look bad, he just keeps walking. They said you were perceptive. They were right. Are you going to continue looking at my my rear end, or do you until like I to? Trust, and, until I trust you, yes. You worked with Fallbreaker. No friend of mine. Well, if you know him, I imagine you did too, Tormund. With is a strong term. Killed a few friends on his way out. Well, that's unfortunate, I suppose. Well, good chat, Tormund. <clears throat> the area around you is... It's, it's palatial, almost. This is a um, this is a tier five manor that feels like a tier three manor. Got like some citadel vibes going on. There are, there are some citadel vibes. Yeah. Um, the, Large um, walls. Oh yeah. yeah. The ceiling is way higher than it needs to be. Classic. Um, um, although you can tell, like you can tell that it's sort of been. Modified to look, to look that probably, with probably with a number of hammers. 
they've been knocking through the ceiling with hammers and they've just made it it's like they've filled in a bunch of the the floor and just cut off other parts to just make it look palatial okay kind of it's polishing a turd but it's like the turd is already like good yeah it's already it's a, good a nice turd. place yeah primo turd yeah primo but the <clears throat> wallpaper is very nice and ornate yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't seem like there's a blemish and there are great big kind of bay windows that look out over tier five um in comparison to um six and seven it's sort of like a kind of medieval kind of upper 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 class medieval vibe you're getting mm. here mm -hmm. like uh, sunny streets and almost kind of mediterranean type of a uh, thing lots of villas about very nice mm. still quite dense but mm. um but it is uh it is very very uh, picturesque mm. um you are led to a drawing room where Omar Delano is uh, sitting on a quite a large couch. He has a cigar, he has a, a glass of wine, which he raises in your direction. Ah, Mr. Valentine, come on in and join me. Would you care for a glass? Mm, please. Mm. Red from my own distillery. Thank you very much. Very, very good here. How are you enjoying the taste of the high life? I'm enjoying it very much. I, you've luxurious. Much different to what I was used to in, well, down there. Hmm. And maybe, well, we, we try here. And you may be a little more used to uh, a little bit higher. Been a long while, Mr. Delano. Hmm. So. Well, ba back to the old familiar. You don't got to worry about that no more. I appreciate it. Hmm. Um, Perry and uh, Tormund, would you mind giving me, me and uh, Mr. Valentine a moment? Help yourself to some wine on the way out. Ah. Well, I know we got off in a bad way, Mr. Valentine. The unpleasant stuff, it was not intended. But... You know that foe breaker. Stubborn as a mule. Stubborn I was just thinking about him. I was just thinking about him this morning, actually. Should he not have been as bullheaded, I'm sure. He could have enjoyed the same. Well, vacation from the pits of scum and villainy below. But that is, that is Mr. Foe breaker, isn't it? I'm sure you know him more than I. Well, I, I know him. I know him well enough. Well enough, but you know he, he's changed in some ways, and in some ways he's still the same. Still an angry, angry man. Just on a different side. I've got an offer for you. I couldn't tell either of you what we wanted down there in number six. You never know when the walls are listening to you, even in a place you know well. You know that better than most. I do make it my business to try and have the walls as deaf as possible. And yes, sometimes it is unavoidable. Hmm. Well, here, you don't got to worry about that. This place, we built this, excuse me, this 
decorum. This place, we built it to be a fortress for, for Elia and myself. A nice home that we could share, but also a home where we knew no one could interfere. Everybody comes in here is vetted. You can't even scry on people in this building. Throughout the whole complex or just in this room? The whole complex. That is impressive. We have our connections. We have a few people who are as fates. You're uniquely placed here. I think. Mia's got problems. Lots of them. From outside, from below, you'll notice from below. Terrible crime, terrible crime. And seven and bleeding through into six. We don't want this. But the real problems are coming from above. And I think you know who I mean. Ah, oh, mutual acquaintance. Our mutual acquaintance. I seem to think you're coming around to your offer, Mr. Domano. I think you and I share a goal. And that goal is to get that person up there and rub them out. I'm more than happy with that offer, but he is only one of many. See? You see, I, I know better than that, and I know you know better than that. One of many? No. He one of the big three. One of the big three that got their fingers in every pie. The benefactor is one. The big guy is another. The third. Well, we're not sure about the third. Am I? Am I sure? Make a history check. I was trying to write down the names. Uh, Twelve. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the benefactor, you're mm -hmm. aware of. The mm -hmm. big guy, you're aware of, because they, um, you overheard them. Their names being mentioned. Um, the benefactor has been named uh, recently. You are somewhat aware that there could be a third. But who that third is, even you're not sure. Mm -hmm. Even even an alias, mm -hmm. you're not sure. So we rub out the benefactor. These other two are still in play. We get the benefactor. We can get the big guy. We get the benefactor and the big guy. We can get number three. So have, you have your sights on all of them, Mr. Delano. I got my sights on all of them. Listen, we may disagree on a few things, right? We may disagree on how we run a business. But we can agree that running a business top down, dealing with people in the way that they do, 
trying to incite tensions. Tensions with other islands, all for, all for making money. Without a care for any of the people. Because you know who goes to war. If they stoke tensions with, I don't know, Overland or... Or Torgorvan or somewhere like that. If they start stoking tensions, it's not people like them. Hell, it, it ain't even people like me who would go to war. It'll be people in seven and six. And it'll be people in five. People who are just doing their business, walking the, walking the streets, trying to live their lives. This sounds all very selfless, Mr. Delano. Well, there's sounds profit very to selfless be. indeed. Now, I'm not to say that you're a you're a bad man, but there must be something behind it. Well, <clears throat> make an insight check. I can insight him, insight this bitch. Uh, dirty 20. There is definitely an ulterior motive behind what he's saying. You don't get the sense that he's, he's necessarily lying about his motivations but there's definitely something behind it mm. that is that is equal to what he's just said if not greater than no i'm not saying you're disingenuous mr delano but this seems like an awfully big job for the goodness of the lower tears Well, there is, of course, the liquidity factor. There is the profit to be made by getting rid of the people who are pointing things in certain directions. Certain directions that are bad for business and bad for people. The two things are not necessarily opposing. Very well. Just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Make another insight check. Dope. That was 24. Okay. He is dead set on rubbing out yeah. those three up there. Mm -hmm. The benefactor, the big guy, and... Number three dead set on it he is staunch in that belief mm -hmm. um, as for his motivations again they seem genuine but as he's talking about the profit motive that is certainly if the two were maybe here before the, they're maybe here profit is up mm -hmm. here a bit yeah it's the liquidity the, the liquidity of chaos and why not i mean if they go to war then his business interests are harmed it's just a happy accident that the poor people don't get sent to war mm -hmm. look now they're you know they're high and perhaps you may doubt our ability to do anything about them. They are, after all, very wealthy, very powerful. Let's take a walk. My wife's got a present for you. A goodie. He takes you out of the uh, drawing room and he takes you down, down into the depths of this place. Mm -hmm. He takes you down past 
what seem to be kitchens um, where a lot of his guys are sitting in rows of tables. They're getting fed very well. Um, the kitchen staff seem to be fairly well treated. Um, you go down, there are many barrels of wine, of mead, of all sorts of things. And you go down further and you're at the very bottom. While I'm walking, am I am I getting like the the North Korea tour? You know, Ooh. when you go past the shops and like they've got like the, the, the cardboard like vegetables. Am I getting like the North Korea tour here? Make a perception check. Uh it's twenty-seven. Oh, that is tasty. Um, I love so, Cass. I love him so much. It was an 18, though. <laughs> that was a really good roll. <laughs> everything appears genuine. Um, you, as you kind of brush your hands over things, it all feels real. It all seems... None of it seems like the North Korea tour or any kind of magical illusion. But like I'm walking past the guys that are getting fed really well. Like they all seem like happy. They all seem. They all seem. Doesn't happy. seem forced. No, they they they. You see them kind of break as he comes by, and he's they sort of give him straighten deferential up, yeah. nods. They they straighten up. The kitchen staff straighten up very noticeably when he comes by. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's nothing to indicate that they are faking any of their emotions yeah. before they see him. Why the fuck did he leave? <laughs> it's going through Cass's mind and the way it's like, what the fuck? This is... <laughs> he takes you down into the depths of this place, past all that, to a very small room with a, an iron door. He knocks on it with a I don't know if that's picking up on the mic. A little bit. A little bit. Hang on, here we go. And then there is a... from the other side. And... all of these locks disengage and the door swings open. Elia Delano is there. She is um, wiping her hands on a... Uh, she's like washing up her hands in a basin and drying them off with a towel. This this is where Cassius realises why Gracchus left. <laughs> you asked at that the moment, perfect At time. that moment, at that moment he goes, oh, <laughs> torture. <laughs> Gratuitous violence in the basement. Mm. Okay, right. Head He's in the game. Head in the game, He's Cassius. <laughs> there is a chair in the centre of the room. And there is a familiar figure tied to this chair. It is a tabaxi. He has been beaten quite severely. You recognize this person as Shifting Sands. Mm. And Shifting Sands, you recognize Cassius Valentine. Well, well, well. How the sands of, well, misfortune have blown through here. I thought you were a smart man, Mr. Valentine. I'm not in the chair. <laughs> How long do you think it will take? Well, I don't intend on... Did you double-cross them like you double-crossed me? Is that what happened? I want to double-cross you too. Your friend left for a reason. Perhaps he was the wiser of the two after all. Oh, perhaps. He's not in the chair either, though. I'm sure he was once upon a time. So we caught this guy. Um... We caught him snooping, and we know who he works for. Yes, he works for those. Why. He works for those up top. 
And we also know that we, it came to our attention that you and he had somewhat of a altercation in tier seven. Yes, there was a misunderstanding, I think. Hmm. Well, we got quite a bit out of him. I think. Did, did we, Elia? Did you get some out of him? And Elia just nods. Plenty. He may not be particularly aware of what we got out of him. But we got stuff out of him. And we have our third, perhaps. We have a pseudonym for the third. This is turning into a lovely day. Isn't it just? Elia, would you mind? Who, who would that third be? The third is the shadow. The benefactor, the big guy, the shadow. As for who the shadow is, this unfortunate cat doesn't know. And if he's to be believed, nobody knows. Sound like how they operate to you, Mr. Valentine? Well, yes, after Mr. Sand's little stunt taking me down to Raven, I did hear the names. It does seem very decompartmentalized, very dispersed. Now, you do not know who the Shadow is. Mm -hmm. You have not heard the name the Shadow before. You were aware of a third, mm -hmm. but you weren't aware of who it could be, or a pseudonym. Never heard the name, though, which is disconcerting. He wouldn't be a very good shadow if he, or she, for that matter, lingered in the daylight, Mr. Valentine. Of course, but they do need daylight to be shadows. This is the lie. Hmm. That was a really cool line. <laughs> I was just in my head going, don't mind. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it appears Mr. Sands here is of no more use. So, Mr. Valentine, our gift to you, settle a score, kill him, or don't. Very well, and I just pull out my, my pistol and shoot him, but I don't have any ammo in it, do I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Sorry, a little bit excited. Do me a favor. Hurry the fuck up. I am tired of hearing this bitch's voice. Oh, now, 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 Mr. Sands. I was in Raven for a very long time. That was business. You, who came from so high up above, who worked in the same circles as those who call themselves the Big Three, you should understand how business works. You? And I've been re-employed, Mr. Sands. Re-employed by the Delanos. This appears to be business as well. It is pleasure for you. Do not lie. Well, if the two can overlap, then that's a, a happy, happy accident, isn't it? Elia Delano. Good for you. Elia Delano. But do you honestly you... think their lunatic fucking plan will work? Elliot Delale hands you a bullet. 
Okay. He's got to make the plan now. At least do me the courtesy of letting me stand on my own two feet. Make a persuasion check, shift. It's a 15. Okay. Oh, I think not. Mr. Mr. Sands, I think not. I truly hope your friend burns them to the fucking ground. Now, what do I want to do? This is this is me talking. Mm -hmm. What do I want to do? Now, Mr. Sands is in a very, very precarious situation at the moment. Yes, he is. So we're we're in the depths of the palace. <clears throat> yes. There is a long way for him to escape, should he be able to escape. He can't. Also, he also can't stand up. Well, he's not. He's not being allowed to stand up. Yeah, but like he's like what chained down? What's going on? What's what's the what's the situation? He is he <clears throat> is shackled to a chair, mm. which is in turn fixed to the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, so Omar can see you hesitating a little bit. Mm. Look. You can kill him, kill him or don't. It is entirely up to you. If you don't kill him, Ellie is going to enjoy her time alone with him. And if she's happy, then so am I. And you get to sleep a little easier, knowing that a thorn in your side has been clipped. Shift looks at you, mm. Cass, mm. pleading. Pleading? At that point. Pleading. Okay, to what? To do what? Shoot him. Okay. If he's going to... His, his logic is, if he's going to die, I'd rather be shot than tortured. Mm. He's, already, he's already been through what she can do once. Mm. He'd rather take the quick way at this point. Yeah. Very well. Just business. All right. There. Yeah. Sorted. The problem has gone away. Well. Cleanup is required. Uh, Mr. Valentine, please. Let's uh, leave the cleaners to their job. A uh, darling. And he holds out a hand, which she takes. Fingers kind of curling around his. And with a hand on your back. Mm. Not a forceful hand, mm. but a friendly hand. They lead you from the chamber. Mm. It is a shame. That Tabaxi made some poor decisions. He could have been a good asset. But he made his choice. He definitely made his choice. And you can't break an you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. He is just one of the eggs. One of their many eggs that they will use against us. Use against you. 
and use against your friend, Mr. Fallbreaker. And I know he is still your friend. I just wish he wouldn't be so pig-headed, that's all. Mule with a toothache, dead man. Mule with a toothache. I think, uh, I think some dinner. I don't know about you. I think I'd like to clean up, if I may, before dinner. That, that would be lovely. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Um, at when they, you reach kind of the estate proper, um, Elia and Omar split off. Mm -hmm. um, Perry, once again, kind of tails you at a bit of a distance as you go wherever you're going. Where are you going? Uh, back to my room. Mm -hmm. How's your day been, Penny? <sighs> Make a... I don't know what check this would be. Roll a, Just roll a d20. Roll a dope check. <laughs> Roll a, roll a, roll a spirit breaker check. 14. <laughs> My day's been fine, Mr. Valentine. I hope yours has been fine as well. Yes. Killed someone. Killed someone who was a thorn in my side. I don't like thorns in my side. I will bear that in mind, Mr. Valentine. Very wise. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bodies of Water, we'll finish part one there of an offer you can't refuse. Um, yeah. Oh, You've yeah. Got fucked up. Yikes. Just to set the tone for, yeah. <laughs> for this, this case. It's almost like as if... <laughs> dark, dark spying. Yikes. Yes. It's, they are the Mafia. Yeah. And they are nasty, nasty bastards. You see why I he left I now? wonder why Did Gracchus left. I wonder why Gracchus left. Oh. <laughs> the, oh torture. the torture and the murder and... All of the, the awful things they do. Okay. The timing of that question was perfect. <laughs> yeah, it really <laughs> was. <laughs> oh. so, do you get it? Do you get it why Gracchus hates these people and wants to kill them all now? Oh, uh, well. Well, <laughs> like, like, comment, um, subscribe, share the video um, if you like my my um, mafioso impression, which is veering ever so slightly into Bernie Sanders. Um, also, great. follow me on Minds. We're the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Anyway. You can follow me on Minds as well if you want. I couldn't tell you where I am on there, but, you know, try and find me. I'm on He's there He's on too. there somewhere. It's like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. And I'm not. And Carl is not. <laughs> so, take care. We'll see you next time. See you later.